one of the worst days in the life of this morning's guest happened in a courtroom. Something happened on that same day in the same courtroom that made it the best day of his life. Find out what it's all about and meet local attorney Russell Mace. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Myrtle Beach Lighting, the lighting store of the year. We're focused on representing our local veterans in the legal system. And we're visiting with Russell Mace, a local attorney. Good morning, Russell. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much for coming in this morning. My pleasure. Great opportunity to get you in. Have you ever been in uh, Myrtle Beach Lighting before? No, I haven't, but it looks like a very, very nice store. It is. They were kind enough to let us in a little early this morning before they open up. They've still got some folks popping on by, which is I great. see that. It's a tremendous uh, location, easy to find, and not too far from your office. My office is right down the street. On the former Air Force Base. That's correct. What a great opportunity to think about serving uh, area veterans being right there on the uh, former Air Base. Have you enjoyed it out there? Yeah, we're right next to the VA, actually. Is that right? That's right. Very easy to find. Yes. Are you originally from the area, Russell? No, I'm originally from Georgia. Okay. I grew up in Georgia until I was about 25 and then moved to Miami, Florida in 1995 and uh, practiced law in Miami for about 10 years before we opened an office in Georgia and then we just opened the office here in Myrtle Beach in January of this year. Is that right? So you're traveling to Georgia and down back down to Miami? Travel all the time. Wow, Russell. And of course you're close to the airport as well. It's very convenient. Which is great, yes, yes. What, uh, what, what practice, do you, what, what type of law do you specialize? We in Miami, where my other office is, we specialize in federal criminal defense and state criminal defense. Mm -hmm. And my wife's also an attorney, and she specializes in appeals. But since we've come up to Myrtle Beach, there's no federal court in Myrtle Beach, and we have to travel to Florence and Charleston. So we've broadened our practice into doing several different areas of law. Mm -hmm. My wife does a, some family law. I also do some injury work and contract work. And one of the reasons we're here today is to talk about the work we're going to do for the veterans. Yes. Now, we haven't started the work for the veterans yet because we're actually on a waiting list mm. of attorneys that are waiting. Attorneys to, that are waiting for. We're waiting to get trained. There's actually a training class in Washington, D.C., and they offer it twice a year, and they may expand it because so many lawyers want to do it now to represent the veterans for free when it comes to their VA benefits. Uh -huh. That's a tremendous service, representing veterans for free? For free. Wow. You've got some time on your hands. It's, I mean, that's, uh, no. that's a big deal, or that's a, just a service focus of, of your firm? Yeah, that's just trying to give back to the veterans. Right. Uh, and I'm, there are most of the larger firms in the country are setting up to have their partners and some of their associates get this training, because in every city in this country, veterans are coming back from the Iraq War, and they need help, whether they're 19 years old or whether they're 55 or 60 years old, sure. going through the red tape with the VA. Right. I mean... Some of them, maybe they do have a law degree, but even me with a law degree and spending years practicing, this paperwork's not easy. And anybody that's dealt with the federal government knows it's hard to get everything right, and it's very easy for some of your benefits to be denied. Uh, there was a case that actually prompted us to get involved in this. There was a young man that came back from Iraq, and he had his leg blown off while he's in Iraq, and the VA said it wasn't related to combat. Uh. And they denied his benefits. And he's like 20 years old trying to figure out, how am I going to you know, go through this process. Right. He's got a young wife. They're trying, they're struggling. Right. And here he has gone off and served his country, comes back, right. and the very government that sent him over there is now saying, yeah, we don't think your missing leg is part of war. Mm. So that kind of prompted myself and my wife and some of our friends to say, you know, how can we help these guys out? Good for you. you know? That's tremendous. What was the ultimate resolution on that? Is it still being... Well, that case, right. we, we read about the case in the uh, New York Times. Right. And uh, I think he was in Oklahoma, uh -huh. if I'm not mistaken. And so I don't know what the final right. outcome yeah, was. I'd be interested to, to hear because ultimately you can't imagine how they would uh, take a stance like that. Uh, We've heard other stories too. Right. We've heard other stories too. Did you have veterans in your family or was it really just reading about that case? Had you yeah. had I'm actually the only male in my family not to go to war for our country. Is that right? Yeah. My grandfather was in uh, World War II and my father was in Vietnam. Uh -huh. So. The love of the law is what spurns you to, uh, I mean, what, 
what kept you out of that, uh, getting into the legal practice? or uh, No, I guess when I was in college, there was really no major conflict going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time we got involved with 9-11, uh, I would think I was already too old mm -hmm. <laughs> to be accepted into anything. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely something that crossed my mind. Um, and I had very seriously considered joining up after 9-11. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it was they were not taking somebody in their mid-30s at that point. Yes. Son of a gun, Russell. Now, your wife, you said she practices family law. Is that mostly here in the area, or is yeah. she down in Miami as well? No, she mainly stays here, okay. but she also travels around the country for certain cases, as I do. And her big focus, she writes appeals to the Fourth Circuit in Richmond, to the right. Supreme Court, yeah. and to the Eleventh Circuit in Atlanta. But big focus here is on state appeals, and she also does some criminal work. Uh-huh. What spurred you to go into the legal profession, Russell? Um... I would say uh, a desire for more education after I got my undergraduate degree, I got a master's degree, and then I decided to go a little bit further and I was either going to get my PhD and try to teach at a college uh -huh. or go to law school. And so during that time I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life as many people I'm sure have had that decision. Early mid-20s, yeah, and I, sure. And uh, the opportunity to go to law school came along and then I thought to myself, let me get out of, I was in, living in a very small town in Valdosta. I mean, the town's about Valdosta, Georgia. It's very small. Right. Compared to Myrtle Beach, it's even smaller. Uh -huh. And I had the opportunity to go to work in Miami. And I said, let me take that opportunity. And it was right. being a lawyer. So yeah. I went down there and became a public defender for four years. Is that right? Good yeah. for you. And so that was not an easy job by any means. Most of my clients didn't speak English. And uh, what was their native language? Was that Spanish. Spanish. I mean, Spanish. Excuse yes. Uh-huh. That's fascinating. Did you ever pick up Spanish or uh, a little bit, uh -huh. a little bit? But I've noticed here the the Spanish I picked up is from a Q Cuban origin, and the Spanish in this area of the country is a Mexican Spanish, mm -hmm. and the dialect very different. Mm -hmm. I was in federal court in Charleston this week, representing a Mexican national, and when I spoke to him in Spanish, he understood about half of what I said, and I understood about half of what he said. Really? And I thought maybe my Spanish was off, and then the court interpreter came in, and she has actually a Spanish instructor, and she had a hard time communicating huh. um, because it wasn't, you know, what they call Castellano Spanish, which is from Spain. Castilian, that's yeah. right. Yeah. They, there was a varying degree of interpretation between her Spanish, his Spanish, and my Spanish. Very interesting. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, and I'm sure that happens on a regular basis as you think through the, uh, the number of, uh, obviously, the growing Hispanic community in, uh, in the U.S. and oh, yeah. as it infiltrates communities, obviously, that's, uh, that could really vary. The, the class there, it's taught in D.C., or do you all have to travel up there, the veterans, getting back to the veterans push? Right. The, and this is the one problem with this, is they only teach the class in D.C., Okay. Previously, they said if we got enough people together, they would come to a location. Uh -huh. But it's been very hard for us to get other lawyers in this area. And D.C. is about an eight-hour drive from here. And so we haven't pushed to try to get the class moved. Right. And the last class was in April. We were put on the wait list then, and now we're on the wait list, and they haven't even scheduled the next class. Uh -huh. um, they fill the class up immediately. Sure. And last time I spoke... Uh, to the administration up there, I think there were 18 lawyers on the waiting list. Mm, is that right? Right. 18 attorneys on the waiting right. list. And the agreement is everybody going to this, mm -hmm. everybody going to this training for the veterans, everybody's agreeing to do these cases for free. Mm -hmm. None of the lawyers are doing these cases to build the government. This is all just to help the veterans. That's a tremendous service, Russell. And your wife plans on doing the same. Do you all plan yes. on taking the course together? Yes. Well, that is great is great as you travel around and think about the the opportunity to serve veterans clearly the, their needs would vary from person to person and it could be as basic as just some basic filings or otherwise to something like the example you read there in the New York Times so you're looking at uh, you the ability to represent based off of your uh, cl your your skill set uh, from doing work down in Miami as well as uh, in Georgia and now here in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, I think we can do a pretty good job for them. Yeah, yeah. And your wife, she's been practicing for, did you all meet down in Miami or up We here? actually met in court. Oh, really? We met in court, and it was a, a rough day for me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> let's hear about that. You remember it vividly? I remember it vividly. I had a client that had missed court, and uh, we had made arrangements with the prosecutor to let my client come in and make a deal and leave. And the judge on this particular day 
had other plans, and he took my client into custody. Oh, no. And I had a witness there to testify why I missed court. There was a mess up in the mail, two roommates living together, one threw the notice away, and the judge just did not want to hear it. And I felt so bad for my client because I had told him, listen, I already made a deal with the prosecutor. You're fine. You're going to go to court, and you're going to leave, and we're going to resolve it. And I walked in. I saw my wife. She's a very attractive woman. I saw my wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, not my wife yeah, at that time. Right, right, right. I was like, oh, it's a very pretty girl over there. And I said, uh, talked to my client. I said, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. Right. <laughs> about 30 seconds later, they're putting handcuffs on my client and putting him in a box. And I said, whoa, 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 judge, 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 judge. We're jumping the gun here. We're jumping the gun. The judge and I proceeded to get into a very acrimonious conversation. They're in open court. In open court. Oh, boy, Russell. And started going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And uh. Uh, <laughs> I ended up leaving the courtroom. I left the courtroom, and I, I kind of stormed out of the courtroom. I was so mad that my client, I felt so bad for my client because yeah. I had told him. We come back. Uh, he's, the judge tells us we're going to come back and hear the case in a week. So my client's going to sit in jail for a full week for a very mm. small charge. Mm -hmm. I ended up leaving the courthouse. I called another lawyer, and we, we're talking. He goes, Russ, cool off. He goes, go back to court, ask to go sidebar with the judge, and talk to him. So I went back. I had cooled off. My future wife's still there. And I went sidebar. I talked to the judge. I said, Judge, sorry I lost my cool. Right. But I had told my client the following things. And the judge had calmed down. And he goes, OK, bring him back. And they let him out. That's and tremendous. Out. And so I saw my future wife. And I was talking. I was like, hey, see, I won this. <laughs> 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 and, and she started laughing. And uh, I gave her my business card. And I said, hey, you'd, you'd like to go out to dinner sometime? Oh, you know? wow. And then I intentionally came back to that courtroom a couple more times. Uh -huh. And we eventually went out to dinner. Good for you. That's tremendous. And you all have been married how long? Uh, just over a year. Is that right? Congratulations. Thank That's you. That's exciting. That's exciting. How about some exciting cases uh, practicing down in, in Miami? I'm sure in a, in a hotbed like that, we think about <laughs> Miami Vice or CSI Miami. Is Miami at all like what we'd see on uh, TV? Awesome. Um, for viewers who may not, our viewers in the PD or Southeastern North Carolina, or even viewers down here on the Strand, who may not have visited Miami or Miami Beach. Miami can be much more than what you see on TV. Oh. Um, the level of crime is very different than what we have in the whole state of South Carolina. In it, what way? It's much more organized. Uh, a lot of people that get arrested in South Carolina, um, many of them, they don't even realize they're breaking the law. It's kind of this thing, well, I didn't know I couldn't do that. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I've, I've I've represented people here already, and they honestly were like, I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, in Miami, the level of organization, the large volume of narcotics that are brought into the country, right. um, some of my more newsworthy cases were representing police officers in mm -hmm. Miami. Uh, many of the police officers in Miami have had run-ins with the federal government and with the local authorities for drugs, and uh, one of my biggest cases, I represented two officers that shot a gentleman in the back of the head as he was running away. Mm. And he was unarmed. And they proceeded to put a gun down on the ground. And the FBI came in. And this case went on for several years. Mm. But uh, those cases tend to be rare. It's mainly the police officers doing the arrest and not the police officers getting arrested. Mm -hmm. But we've had some pretty exciting ones. Pretty, pretty exciting ones. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Any others that really stick out in your mind? Of course, this is a people show and the opportunity to highlight, since you haven't yet had the class to represent veterans yet, it's, it's tough to get into that to some degree. Of course, right. I know you, you and your wife are clearly focused on that and for the right reasons, but uh, since we got a few minutes, just thinking about some fascinating cases that you might have dealt with, either, either there or even up here in your, in your uh, short time up here. We've... It's, it's actually been rather unique at times. The one good thing about the practice of law is you're able to put different hats on. And what I mean by that is you're able to defend someone one day and then have the similar case come in and represent the victim uh -huh. of uh -huh. that same type of case. Right. And it actually, I, I had a person ask me several weeks ago, how, do you, how are you able to defend somebody for this, you right. know, whether it's a DUI or a burglary one day and then the following week you have the victim of another case come in not the same one okay uh -huh, uh -huh. but and they come in and they go we want you to represent us against this guy he did this this and this 
And it actually is, the transition is not too difficult because I can see both sides right. of the situation. Mm -hmm. I have defended many, many people in the past 10 years, but I've also been the victim of crime. Mm. And I've had people ask me, you know, how do you defend these people? How do you do this? How do you do that? And I've always said to myself, well, you know, you have to take a step back and, and say to yourself, am I defending the person or am I defending the system that we have as our justice system? Mm -hmm. And so being the victim of a crime, I've never gotten too upset because I've always said to myself, I do a lot of defending. Right. And right. so how can I be a hypocrite and say, oh, this, this is the most horrible thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, I can understand if you don't have my job, I've felt very, very sorry for many, many victims in certain cases. Mm -hmm. um, but in other cases, I've also said to myself that my client is the actual victim. Um, and they're a victim of the justice system because at times it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. What are some of the ways the justice system doesn't work? Is it different in, in Miami or different in Florida courts or in federal court down there than it would be in Florence or Charleston, let's say? Quite honestly, I, I think Charleston's one of the more fair cities that I've seen. Mm. Uh, Miami can be a very, we'd like to say, if you're going to get arrested, Miami's a good place to be arrested. Okay, and the reason is there's such a voluminous population of criminals that uh -huh. your case isn't going to stand out unless it's tremendous. Um, getting arrested here in Horry County, I think uh, the solicitor's office here is very thorough in investigating uh -huh. their sure. cases. Sure. But a lot of times they rely on information that's given to them from sources that there's no way for them to check. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when the justice system isn't working properly, it's not based on a prosecutor's mistake usually or necessarily a police officer's mistake but the culmination of information and uh, of pointing the finger at someone without confirming that that is actually the person that did the crime right so mm. there's a lot of innocent people sitting in jail and people don't think that that's happening but mm. it's all over the country you know every time we see somebody vindicated by a dna test mm -hmm. you say to yourself well how did that happen how did this guy serve 10 years when there was two eyewitnesses Right. You know. You've seen some good examples of that even in your 10 plus years of practicing. Yeah, we've, we've, had, we've had some amazing results. We just set a guy free two weeks ago who had served 10 years. Mm, 10 years? 10 years. And he got out, and the sad part was the judge ordered him to be released, and this was down in Miami, and the Florida Department of Corrections kept him for another five days. So his family was in court waiting for him to leave, right. and we were waiting, and the Department of Corrections which is a separate entity, it's part of the executive branch, they said, listen, we're not releasing him until the paperwork gets fully you know, documented mm -hmm. in Tallahassee. So it was bad we told him, hey, you're going to get released after right. 10 years of serving your time, and then he's sitting in jail over the weekend, mm -hmm. waiting, waiting, and waiting. You know? So it can be a challenging profession at times. Yes, yes, Russell, but some of the great aspects of it are clearly those instances of helping to get somebody out. Oh, that's uh, the best part of the yeah. job. That's the best feeling in the world to help somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You see, any other family in the law? You and your wife, clearly, uh, brothers and sisters? Yeah, or I, uh, I have a sister that used to be a district attorney in Georgia. Really? And now she's in private practice. Down in Valdosta? Down well? in Valdosta. Right. Right. And uh, we used to not get along at all when she was a prosecutor. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> we had very different philosophies on life. But uh, now that she's gone into private practice, She's it's opening up, so she's, it's in the water down in, in Georgia, it sounds like, <laughs> or at least in Valdosta. Your folks, uh, are they in the legal profession as no, well? No, my dad's a businessman. Good, yes. Yeah. You know, when you think about places in the country to set up um, a law firm, potentially, what was it around, about Horry County, about Myrtle Beach in particular, and about the Air Force Base uh, out there next to the Veterans Administration a facility there that prompted you and your wife to, to make this uh, your new second home, third home? Working in reverse chronological order, yeah. the, our office at the uh, Air Force Base was kind of a fluke. I went to a class out there and ended up seeing the office space available, Right. talked to the owner, and I said, hey, we'll take it. But Myrtle Beach was kind of uh, luck. We had decided last year in Miami that Miami was getting too hot and that too physically hot. Physically yeah, hot. Yeah, Not yeah. as hot as it is here on Election Day. <laughs> That's right, on Election Day, June 10th. Thank you. <laughs> but it is uh, definitely warm. And uh, up the weather in Myrtle Beach has got to be some of the best weather in the country. Yeah. It really is amazing. Even when it's really hot yeah. at night, you can sit outside 
and in Miami at night you're sweating. Uh. So what happened? We were <laughs> we were actually driving up to Boston to see a client, and uh, we we're uh, on our way, and we got, I guess, to Savannah, and we said, hey, let's just go to Myrtle Beach. So we went to Myrtle Beach, and my wife's grandfather was a doctor here back oh, in the really? 70s and 80s, uh -huh. and uh, he retired as a doctor in Pittsburgh and then reopened his practice here in Myrtle Beach. So. She said, hey, let's stop, and we stopped, and I think it was in late August or early September. Of last year? Of 06. Oh, of 06, excuse me. And I think it got down to like 40-something degrees. Uh -huh. And we just had linen pants, yeah. t-shirts, and I was like, wow. And it was amazing, because in Miami it doesn't cool off until first week of December. Uh -huh. And so uh, we ended up staying here a night, we went to Boston, we came back and spent two more nights here. And then we came back around four months later and spent three nights. And we went to Savannah and we were trying to decide what location we were going to start basing our office out of. Sure. And uh, Savannah's way too hot. Savannah's just... Boy, you and your wife really are... Deter I mean, weather's a determinant there uh, that... Uh, we love to be outside. We uh -huh. do a lot of play golf and yeah. tennis. Yeah. So the weather is a big factor for us. Yeah. It makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to be comfortable. That's a very good point. If you're going to practice law, and particularly since you and your wife are both focused on a lot of the pro bono work on behalf of veterans, and I assume that would be all over the place, uh, Yes, doing work like that. Clearly, you want to have a nice uh, location uh, where the weather is good. Yeah. Where the weather is good. Well, Myrtle Beach is a nice place, too. That is fascinating, Russell. Well, you know, when you think about if, if, if a viewer needs to run off now, get out of the house, what's the best way to, to learn more about you and your, you and your wife's firm? Is there a a good website, good phone number here in town. Obviously, it's a non-commercial show, but clearly with y'all's focus on uh, some great higher things there. Yeah. Well, they can go to our website. It's www.themacefirm.com. Okay. It's T-H-E-M-A-C-E-F-I-R-M.com. Right. Good. Some of the stuff they'd find there on the site. A biography about myself, biography about my wife, our areas of law that we practice, and phone numbers. Great. Good. Helpful Email. links and uh, yes, some other good stuff on there. That's great. You know, when you think about um, all the different opportunities to focus on the law, and as you're going through those three years of law school, trying to determine what, uh, when you did make the ultimate decision to go to law school, and then were there over the three years, um, criminal law, clearly doing that and, and becoming a public defender right out of uh, law school, what was it, there was some aspect there that clearly was pulling you? Well, I knew I wanted to be a trial lawyer. Uh, after maybe three months of law school, I uh, knew exactly what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. I did not want to sit down and write contracts all the time. I didn't want to do tax law. Uh, I wanted to be in court more than anything. I thought that's where the excitement is. and That's why I went in the public defender direction is because, there, in my opinion, and opinions can differ, but in my opinion I don't think there's a better training ground for a trial lawyer because we are thrown in I think I was in trial within four days of beginning my job at the office. Mm. And that continued almost bi-weekly for several years. Right. And you know, I know lawyers have been practicing for 30 years and they've had two jury trials. Uh -huh. you know? And so I really, and I enjoyed it. To me that was you know, what the whole the training was for, was to go to court. Right. You know? That's tremendous. Russell, thanks so much for being with us this Thank morning. Thank you, Greg. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you. Stay tuned to more Carolina People's Russell Mace, a local attorney, coming up next. As the polls opened 30 minutes ago and oh residents okay. throughout the Carolinas are stepping out to vote today, we got to remember, step back and think about the tremendous sacrifice of veterans. Veterans not only here in our viewing area, but all over the country that have made a difference and continue to make a difference every day. Russell and his wife in the same way, making a commitment to them as they've made a difference for us. The commitment steps out day after day, and you can be a part of that. Learn more about the Maces, themacefirm.com. Think about that as you step out today. Get out to vote. Russell Mace, thanks so much for being with us. This My morning. pleasure. Thank you for having me.